All right, this is going to be a short video and it's about arrays. I know that pretty much everyone that's watching this series already knows what an array is, but it's so fundamental that I feel need to cover it anyways. So an array is a sequence of data that's just stored one after the other in memory. Since memory is just a long sequence of data, it just kind of makes sense to line up large amounts of data uh, in what we call arrays. So arrays will have like a starting point and that's typically what the variable points to in languages like C. And if you know the data type of the array in something like C, you can increment where you're pointing to in memory to instantly access an item within that array based on its index. So you can instantly get the second or fifth or 120th item in an array by just looking at the memory location you'd expect for that item. It's best to think of it as just a line of data. The thing that you guys might not be aware about with arrays, especially if you're coming from a Python background, is that they're not inherently resizable. When arrays are declared on a lower level, typically they're a specified length so that the space after the array can be used to store other things and like other variables and whatnot. So it has a designated endpoint because other things need to start taking up the memory after it. Because of the fact that you can't guarantee that there's memory after the array to expand the array into, it effectively makes the array impossible to resize unless you move the entire array to somewhere else. What people typically do if they're trying to store large amounts of data that are increasing in number over time when you're just adding to it, uh, is they'll declare an array and take up more memory than they initially need so they can add in values as they go because the space is already allocated, it's just not used. If you're continuously adding data and you don't have any idea how much you're going to need, a lot of people will start with a decently large array size, and then every time it hits its maximum, it deletes it, creates a new one with double the capacity, and you just keep on doing that. That way, if you're storing large amounts of data, you won't have to move the entire thing too often because every single time you move it, you can double the amount of data you're using before you need to take space again. Anyways, if you're familiar with Python, one of the most basic data types that people normally think of when they think of arrays are the lists, which are in fact not arrays. They use arrays on a lower level, but they're more complex than that, and they allow you to add and remove items. Anyways, before I end this video, since there's really not much to talk about here, as long as you understand what an array is, I'd like to go over the time complexities for the different operations for arrays. Arrays on their most fundamental level, if you're not including the fact that you can just create new ones because that's just recreating the data structure, it's not inherent to the data structure itself, they do not have an insert or delete operation. As for the other operations, we have read, which is O of 1, it's constant runtime, doesn't matter how much data you have in the array, if you know the index of the item, you can find its value instantly. However, if you don't know the index, you're going to have to search for the value. So if you're trying to find a value, you're going to have to look through the entire array. So if there's millions of items in there, you're going to have to look through millions of items. And that's one of the bigger issues with arrays. And that's why some of the more complex data structures exist. While I'm talking about search, I'd like to mention something with big O in general as well. So if you think about it, if you, an item that you're looking for, you assume there's one in a random location in your array, it would on average be in the middle because it could be in either ends and it just averages out to be in the, in the middle. You would think that that would mean that it's big O of n divided by two for the time complexity where n is the length of the array. However, because divided by two is just really 0 0.5 times n, that 0 0.5 is a coefficient and therefore you would drop it because of big O. So it's just O of n. The last operation you have for arrays is the update operation. Updating a value in an array is pretty much the same as reading in terms of runtime. If you have the index, it's instant and you just overwrite that memory location, you're done. So arrays are very limited in their functionality uh, and their searching is slow, but the read and update operations are very fast. So even though it's a very primitive data structure, it's definitely an incredibly useful data structure. Anyways, that's it for this video. Hopefully I'll see you guys in the next one.